people. Um, I think most. Sorry, again, I just hi. clicked the record button. Okay, I will start that again for the recording. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Wafel. Um, I think most of you know me, but for those who don't, I'm an uh, attorney lobbyist at Flaherty and Hood, and I do the advocacy work for the Greater Minnesota Parks and Trails. I'm very excited that you could be online with us for our first forum this uh, legislative session. Um, we tried this before and did it every other week. We found that was a little too frequent, but um, we're going to try it again and see if monthly works just so everybody can stay in touch um, and kind of know what's going on with parks and trails, mainly with our legislative agenda, but also with some of the other issues with respect to parks and trails up at the legislature. Um, I'm not going to be, I'm going to be doing this pretty, I don't want to say loose because I actually have a detailed outline on my other screen, but I'm going to be doing this without a PowerPoint or anything. So if you have questions or whatever, um, please feel free to, uh, um, uh, to, you know, raise your hand. Now, um, you know, I'm not going to make everybody introduce themselves unless you want to, um, I, you know, because that can take a while, but um, I would suggest if your city or county or organization is not in your name, why don't you put it up there so everybody else knows who you are? Um, so, but that's kind of what we're going to do. So um, what I would say too, is if you have any questions as we go along, please do either use the raise your hand function or quite frankly, just spit it out. Um, we're going to be pretty informal here. Um, so first, I want to kind of just talk generally about what's going on with the legislative session. Um, we are in the first half of the legislative biennium, and as I'm sure all of you know, um, we have a trifecta. We have, um, which means we have a, a majority uh, of the same party and the governor's office. So the Democrats are in control of everything, and I have to say, things are off to a very, very fast and frenzied start. Um, that uh, things are are moving very, very quickly. There's already bills being passed off the floor. There's a number of priorities that the uh, Democrats, you know, they campaign on and they said, okay, we campaign on it. We're gonna get it done in 31 days. So everybody up at the legislature is running ragged. On the flip side though, if if your issues aren't one of those, you know, the, you know that top 20 issue that they're focused on, things can be a little bit slower. Um, you know, I'm still waiting on bill jackets for another client. We finally got the bill jackets on our legislation that I'm going to talk about, but um, it's kind of it's kind of wild. Um, the other thing I would say is that, you know, we're seeing a mixture with respect to the legislation that's passed that is both partisan and bipartisan. Um, I think a lot of people were very pleased to see a tax bill pass on a bipartisan basis, showing that they can actually work together. Um, we are seeing other issues that are not as bipartisan, um, so I think there's going to be a divide. I'm hoping that we can continue to have parks and trails be a very bipartisan issue, um, but we'll see. Um, the other thing I'll mention is that the governor's budget bills are rolling out. Um, yesterday, the DNR sort of, um, you know, shared, and I know Renee and Ben were both on that call, sort of the first part of the investment that the state is making in the DNR and state parks. They also mentioned that a bonding bill, you know, you know, this session, perhaps even early, um, is fairly likely. So, you know, that's some interesting news. Um, the governor did not, um, you know, mention sort of how the parks and trails would play out in greater Minnesota, but, you know, we'll continue to push on that. Um, shifting from sort of a general focus to a more specific focus, I would say that the good thing about um, a Democratic majority for us is that Democrats like parks and trails. Um, and quite frankly, they like to spend money um, and they are not as interested as say a Republican majority might be in putting on restrictions that we would be really concerned about. Um, you know, we have seen in the past pushes to do everything from, you know, limiting what you can use your legacy funds for, or what you can use bonding funds for, to making it really hard to just, you know, make parks and trails in a variety of ways, you know, limiting what you can pay for land. We're not likely to see that under the Democrats. So that's good. They're likely to put more money into parks and trails, which is good. I would say the bad news is, is that the DFL caucus is dominated by Metro legislators. Um, and so that will be a bigger challenge for us this year. And, um, you know, the good thing is, is that they, they could not have that majority without some rural members. You know, there's not nearly as many as I would like as someone who works a lot with Greater Minnesota, but there are rural members that are, you know, are, are there and are going to be honestly really, really important to us in um, ensuring that our interests are protected. And 
saying that, I know quite a few of you just looking at where you're from, you're like, well, great, my, my legislator is Republican. Okay. You know, don't be discouraged because on things like, say, a bonding bill, they do need Republicans out there. And um, if you have a Republican legislator, they still may be somebody who's willing to work with the other side. And so it still may be okay. But I do think, again, particularly for those of you with mm -hmm. Democratic legislators, I'm going to be calling on you for help. Um, you know, some of the key members who, as part of this discussion in the Senate, um, you know, Grant House Child, who's from the, the Hermantown Proctor area, is going to be very important. Um, Senator Jennifer McEwen, who is the senator from Duluth, will be extremely important because um, in the Senate, she is vice chair of a committee that has jurisdiction almost over almost everything we care about. Um, the way that the Senate set up their committees, um, if you remember last year, there were two environmental related committees. There was a committee that was run by Senator Ingebrigtsen, and that hand handled sort of the financial side of the environment. And then there was a policy and legacy committee that was head, headed up by Senator Rood. And, and quite frankly, both of those legislators were very helpful to us, particularly Senator Rood. Um, you know, they both retired and obviously the, the Senate GOP lost their majority. Um, but they, the DFL in creating their committees, they have a, um, a single uh, legacy and environment committee. And that is going to be chaired by Senator Fuang Her who is from St. Paul. I like Senator Her. I have a very good relationship with him. Um, but I'm also very pleased to see that a greater Minnesota um, legislator, um, who is Senator Jennifer McEwen from Duluth, is the, um, the vice chair of that committee, because if things pop up, we may need her. Um, another person who's going to be extremely important to us is going to be Senator Nick Frentz. He's not on those two committees, but he is very high up in leadership. He's going to be listened to by a lot of people. And so, um, you know, like right now, this week, I'm not trying to talk to him about parks and trails because he's trying to get an energy bill done. But after that, trust me, he'll be he'll be getting his ear bent. Um, but he's going to be, you know, hopefully helpful on this stuff as well. I know there's a lot of projects down in, you know, sort of the Blue Earth, Nicollet County and Mankato areas that that um, are important. So hopefully we can get him on board. Senator Rob Kupik is going to be important, another person, and uh, I'll be talking to you about this, Ben, but uh, uh, Senator Eric Putnam from uh, St. Cloud is going to be important, as is Senator Liz Bolden. On the House side, um, the leadership, the I will say two things. The legacy and environment are split into two committees. I'm going to tackle legacy first. Um, I think one of the challenges on legacy is that I don't think there's any rural members from the DFL on there. There are some Republican members on there from the rural areas, but I think almost all of the, unless Renee, correct me if I'm wrong, I think everybody on Legacy is from the metro area. And I'll talk a little bit when we get to issues about why that could create problems. Um, the good thing is, is that between the years, both you know myself and Renee Matson from Greater Minnesota Regional Parks and Trails Commission have developed good relationships with the Lily and he, Leon Lilly, who's the chair of that. And I think he will be very fair. Um, I happened to develop a good relationship with the freshman who is now chair of uh, that or the vice chair of that committee as well. But at the end of the day, they're all metro. So we'll talk about why that matters. Um, in terms of the House Environment Committee, which handles the funding for one of the asks we're going to make, um, that has a more of a mixed makeup. The leader of that committee is Rick Hansen, who is from the metro area, and the vice chair is... Um, uh, Representative uh, Sydney Jordan, I am hoping um, Representative Jordan, you know, can help us at times. Um, you know, we've been working closely with her and another client on some stuff that affects all state, and she has been very appreciative of Greater Minnesota's voice. So I'm hoping she'll take us seriously on parks issues as well. Um, David Lislagard, who's from the Iron Range, and then Jeff Brand, who is from uh, the St. Peter, North Mankato area, are also going to be very important because they're on that Environment Committee. Um, Liz Olson from Duluth is the chair of Ways and Means. She will be extremely important, as will Dan Wolgamott, who is um, a, a legislator from St. Cloud, who um, just he has a strong leadership role. He's I think he's the speaker pro tem and so has a lot of influence in that caucus as well. And obviously, um, there are I'm not going to name all of them. There are other Democratic representatives from Mankato, Duluth and Rochester who will all become important in this. Um, so that kind of gives you the lay of the land. Any questions on committees? Okay, let's talk about issues. Um, I think uh, just we'll start with our top goal. 
Um, and this will be protecting the 40, 40, 20. Um, as a refresher, hopefully most of you know this, but what the 40, 40, 20 is, is the formula for how they divvy up the legacy funds. And so um, with the legacy funds, uh, you know, 14% of the sales tax, the legacy sales tax goes to parks and trails. Then of that, 40% goes to metropolitan parks, 40% goes to um, DNR, and then 20% goes to greater Minnesota. Do we wish that number was higher? Yes. Is that a battle we're going to be taking on? Probably not. Um, if you ever want to know more on why and sort of the decade long sort of fight on that. I'm happy to spend more time on that probably offline. Um, but, uh, you know, it's if we were going to get that changed, it would have been when the uh, the GOP was in control and we were not able to nudge them hard enough on it. Um, the one thing I will say about that is that over the last decade, you know, that this was it was a very, very hard fought battle to get that percentage. And, you know, um, we've pushed a couple times to try and get it in statute. We haven't been able to have that. And I'll be honest, you know, we're all amongst friends here. The challenge is the metro area and different parties within the metro. Um, you know, if you were to talk to the actual Met Council, they're fine with that. There are individual cities who are like, wait a minute, we deserve more money. Why are they sending all this money out where it's all rocks and cows or whatever? They don't use that language. That was a joke. Um, but there are cities there, you know, including sometimes the one I live in, um, that think they deserve more money. And they have tried different tactics at times. Um, you know, historically, they've tried to go after our share. Other times, they've tried to go after the DNR share. And we have walked very much lockstep with the DNR in terms of protecting our 20% and their 40%. Um, at this point, I have not seen any active challenges to that 40, 40, 20, but I'm gonna be really honest, I will not be surprised if I do see a challenge. Um, and uh, this was kind of confirmed by a, con a conversation that Renee had with a legislator from my home city who kind of pointed out like, you know, Metro deserves more. And again, it was probably just an opening of a conversation, but I, I know there are Metro legislators that are looking at that. Um, we are strategizing about whether or not we introduce our own bill or whether we introduce one with, you know, the DNR or something else on that or how that's going to work. Typically, we have not had to introduce a bill over the last several biennium to protect our 20%. It's just gone in as sort of the governor's legacy bill. Um, I am assuming we haven't seen the governor's legacy bill, but he is going to preserve that. We have not heard any differently. And that is that particular piece is run by the DNR. They would have, you know, we, we have good relationships with them. They would have told us that. But I do think this could be an issue. And so, again, I rattled off all those legislators. Um, you know, we will be talking to them and sort of making making our concerns known, um, and we will be reaching out particularly to those of you <laughs> who may be from those areas, you know, going forward. We actually, we're, when we do action alerts, we want everybody to respond, but I I don't want to scare anybody, but on the other hand, I, I, I want to make sure that we are prepared on that issue, um, and so Understand. Sorry, my watch does not understand. Um, but we are we are going to be making sure that Greater Minnesota's twenty percent continues to be protected. Does anyone have any questions on that issue? Okay. Next issue: funding the commission. Now, you all can if you if you can see at the top of your screen, uh, Renee and Joe give a big wave. Um, they are uh, the uh, the executive director and the systems something or other of the uh, Greater Minnesota Regional Parks and Trails Commission. Brad, give a wave. Brad Bong, he is a one of the commissioners for the Greater Minnesota Regional Parks and Trails Commission. And let me tell you, the commission does great work. They are the ones that um, you know sort of have put together our entire system of Greater Minnesota Parks and Trails. They are the ones that evaluate our grants that help cities and counties sort of develop their, um, you know, applications for both grants and for designations. Um, in fact, if you ever have any questions or need help on that, I urge you to call Renee or Joe. Um, Renee or Joe, do you want to just say a word or two on what you guys actually do? Because you know better than I do. <laughs> As opposed to what you think we do? Yes, please. <laughs> I would like to just mention too, that Commissioner Beth Pierce from District 1 is on the call as well. Um, oh, so, thank you. I did not yeah. notice that. <laughs> 
Um, you know, I, I, I think you summarized it well. We, um, the overall commission work, Joe is the system plan coordinator. So Joe works really closely with organizations and entities that are looking for their particular facility to be um, part of the greater Minnesota system. Right now, there are 74 facilities that have been designated as regionally significant, and we expect more coming in this year. Um, so designation piece is one important piece and funding, of course, is what most people are interested in once they're in the system. So two parts of a, a whole that um, have worked really well for Greater Minnesota with the 20% that we do have for funding. Excellent. Well, and part of the reason I brought up what Renee and her team does is that um, the first piece of legislation that we are introducing, and it should be, we should have a number for it in the Senate by Monday, is a bill that is asking the legislature to take part of that uh, bajillion dollar surplus they have and give half a million per year to pay for the work that Renee and Joe do. They are getting paid for that work right now. She's a lovely woman, but she's not doing this for free. Neither is Joe. Need to eat, need to you know, make sure the dog is fed. Um, but right now, the way it is structured is that um, the commission costs are pulled out of Greater Minnesota's 20% of legacy funds. Um, and that's on top of 2.5% that is paid to the DNR for administering grants. And so right off the top, before we can even get to granting things, that's money that does not go to parks and trails. And I am sure any one of you could um, basically come forward, you know, with an idea of something that, you know, you, you could pay for with that half a million or a million dollars worth of grants. And so we are asking for general funding um, so that they're more on par with the Metropolitan Parks and the DNR. Um, for the author in the Senate, we have Grant Housechild, and then we've got a, a, a bipartisan crew um, lined up as co-authors. I've got a, we've got a Metro legislator, um, whose name I, Gustafson, um, we've got Senator Frentz on that bill. We have, um, who's the other Democrat? Do you remember, Renee? Um, Senator McEwen. Senator McEwen from Duluth. And then we asked um, Senator Lang, um, who is from, who used to be Renville County. And um, he was actually a member of this organization before becoming a legislator. Um, our House bill is going to be uh, chief authored by David Lislagard, but we're going to have Jeff Brand and a couple others right there behind him. Um, and that'll be getting introduced in the House later this week. We had some challenges with the bill jackets we won't get into, but it's a really important bill. And again, we think long term, I think all of you want to be seeing that money funneled back into greater Minnesota. So any questions about that? Okay, our next legislative goal. Now, I, I'm guessing if you of you are all just like, you know, that's great. I've got parks and trails, but they're never going to qualify for legacy. What about me? Well, we do care about you. In fact, it's been probably one of our most important and most successful legislative initiatives over the last, uh, you know, almost four to five biennium. And that is making sure that money is going into um, the uh, program at DNR sort of programmatic grant programs that are open to any park and trail in greater Minnesota so that you can, you know, get the money to help do your connector trails, expand your, you know, handicap access uh, at your parks, put in your kayak uh, lifts, and you know, an, an abundance of different things um, using those grant programs. And that's that has really been a very high priority for the organization since you know, since I started working with it. Um, you know, when I started working with the organization, Greater Minnesota Parks and Trails, the word regional was in our name. And you know, the first thing we did is we actually took regional out of the name because we know how important it is for both you know, to support not only our regional parks and trails, but your your hometown city parks and trails as well. Um, so one of the things we are always looking for is, you know, here and there, making sure that money is going into those programs. Um, you know, uh, I it actually was, I can't believe it was three biennium ago, we worked with Senator Rood, and I, I'm, I'm going to say snuck, because we kind of snuck it, but we snuck a baseload appropriation into you know, from the general fund into those grant programs that every once in a while somebody tries to take out. And uh, one of the things I do, you know, regardless of what time of the morning is, is they're put passing the environmental bill, I'm making sure that they are not taking our money out. Um, and that's, a, that's Senator Rube's legacy of having it there and we want to keep it. Um, we also have been, uh, you know, worked with the DNR to make sure that the LCCMR is putting money into that. If you don't know what the LCCMR is, um, I want to remind you that that is the Legislative Citizens 
Commission on Minnesota Resources. It is, and, and I, I want to continue to emphasize this. I know that um, you you all have, you know, maybe larger projects or maybe some smaller projects you're working on. They have, um, and we hope they continue to fund um, not only that grant program, but they've also made funding for some of our individual members. I know that, for example, the um, uh, God, I'm sorry, I'm blanking here. The Misabi Trail, for example, has gotten a significant um, portions of their trail, you know, done by getting money for the LCCMR. Red Wing, for example, um, got money for their Barn Bluff facility. So some of the same things that maybe you'd get legacy for, maybe you wouldn't, have also been funded through the LCCMR. I'll admit, quite frankly, it's a little more of a pain in the butt to get that money. But when you are assembling something, it is, you know, you want to look at all possible resources. And so I'm going to make the pitch that because they just opened the grant application up for that, that you take a look at that and see if one of your projects fits for it. I also should mention that because um, it happened on January 1st, they just opened the applications up for the local trail connections, regional trail connections, and outdoor rec grants. So again, look at those grant programs. It is extremely important to us that if we're up at the Capitol fighting to put money into those programs, that you folks are taking advantage of them. So please, please look at those programs. And if they fit your projects, please put applications in. Um, so with respect to the LCCMR bill, you know, they, again, it is a little bit of a drawn out process, but they, you know, they take applications, then they do they decide who's going to present, then they, you know, make the presentations, vote on recommendations. Long process, but then they make the recommendations. The recommendations got done this fall. I'm very pleased to say that um, in addition to a couple of our members getting project money, $3.8 million is going into those DNR grant funds. And so um, unlike if you if you followed the saga over the last, you know, three, four years, there's been a couple of years where they almost just blew the money because they could not come to an agreement on how to get it done. Um, I think it's going to go forward this year unless, you know, shenanigans ensue, but I, I just don't think there's going to be shenanigans. Um, this bill came to the House um, Environment Committee already this week. They've passed it out. It's moving forward. Hopefully the same thing's going to be happening in the Senate. And sort of, like I said, right now, the DNR has got the applications open for those programs. Hopefully that means there's going to be at least $3.8 million more that are going to be available. So look at those programs. So um, that's another top priority. Um, so those are the big ones we're working on, but I want to mention two other things. Um, the first is the lottery. Um, oh, actually, both of them have to do with the lottery, but um, you may wonder where the LCCMR gets all that sweet you know, money that they're handing out. And it actually comes from the proceeds of the lottery. A portion of the lottery is sent to what's called the Environmental and Natural Resource Trust Fund. Now, the reason it is sent there is that a constitutional amendment was passed more than 20 years ago to do that. However, that amendment expires, I believe it is in 2025. So they need to renew that amendment. There have been, so basically right now, 50% of the proceeds go to, I mean, those are proceeds, you know, excluding what gets paid out to the winners, but those proceeds, 50% go to the fund, 50% go um, to the general fund. There have been various efforts um, throughout the years to try and, um, you know, change that. There have been proposals to put some into wastewater. There have been proposals to put it in the parks and trails. It's a, it's a discussion we're monitoring um, and inserting ourselves into where appropriate to the extent that we can, you know, get some of that dedicated specifically to parks and trails, we are going to be supportive of it. Um, it is not our top priority because it is something that um, it is a, I don't want to call it so much a contentious issue is that there are so many factors in play that um, I think it would be a distraction from our core mission to put all of our efforts into it, but we are actively engaged. Um, the other um, thing that I was, you know, uh, Ben doesn't even know about this yet. Ben's our, by the way, Ben's whose picture is showing as the chair of our, or president of our organization. Um, I haven't even had time to email him about this, but I was going through bill introductions last night and um, there is legislation that would um, take right now, there is funding called lottery in lieu. And what the lottery in lieu is, is basically it is sort of a payment to the state for the sales tax that it's kind of missing out because of the lottery. That's an oversimplified explanation. So don't take that to your friends. But um, 
but it, basically what it, it does is it provides money that goes sort of back to certain organizations. And the way it is set up right now, it was put in place again 20 years ago. When it was set up, 22% of those funds went to the state parks. 22% of those funds went to metro parks. And then a small 2.5% goes to the DNR programs. You may notice what's missing. There's nothing for greater Minnesota. And to me, that's a problem. I hope you all agree with that as well. Um, and the, um, you know, it is a concern for us, but we also, quite frankly, one of the things we've recognized as we've been doing this for a number of years is that there are sacred cows at the legislature and taking away money from the DNR and Metro Parks is a sacred cow that we are kind of staying away from. And, um, uh, but there has been legislation introduced this year because right now 50% goes to Lottery and Lou that would put 99% of lottery and Lou um, to, um, to basically all of the named organizations. And um, right now that extra 49% just goes into the general fund for anybody can use it. Um, but 99% would now go to sort of the, the name designees. So they would be getting more money. Um, so what we're going to be looking into and trying to work with um, Ideally, the authors, but um, hopefully some of the legislators that are on there. The, the chief author in the House is not going to be friendly on this, but I do know that, for example, like Representative Liz Lagarde and Brand are on this bill in the House. In the Senate, we do have a Greater Minnesota author. So we're going to talk to them about, you know, can we carve out a portion for Greater Minnesota? Are we going to be able to achieve this? I don't know, but you're not going to get it if you don't ask for it. So it will become part of our ask um, this year, assuming that I get the board to approve it, Ben and Brad. Um, but it seems like something that if, if it's going to happen, I think that trying to carve out a portion for ourselves later will be difficult because once people start getting a funding stream, taking it away is really hard. And so trying to be sort of on the front end saying, hey, if you're going to be expanding the funding pool, you should expand it to greater Minnesota. So um, again, that's brand new and exciting. Haven't even had a chance to talk about it with my board. Uh, Renee and I were talking about something else this morning, so she heard about it. So um, any questions on those legislative initiatives? Um, just for those of you, I know a number of you, for example, are seeking um, bonding money for your parks and trails. Um, you know, again, we're hearing rumblings that there's going to be a bonding bill early this year. The other rumblings, though, I'm hearing is that... Um, for this, this is not a typical bonding year. For those of you who apply for um, money for your bonding money for your parks and trails, you may know that generally the idea is they do a bonding bill on the even years because on the odd years they have to pass the state budget, so they do the bonding years on the even year. And y'all probably know they just couldn't get their acts together and pass a bonding bill last year, so they're probably going to do it this year. But from what I understand. Um, Right now, the plan is that the bonding bill will likely only include sort of projects that were in the mix last year. You know, there's a bonding bill that none of us ever saw um, that had a number of projects. But if you're, I, I, I guess what I'm saying is not to discourage you, if you weren't in the mix last year, you're probably not in the mix this year. But that being said, again, if bonding is a route you want to go for funds, um, the bonding cycle for 2024 will start later this spring. Um, and in fact, uh, I want to say, um, I can't remember if it was last spring, I think it would have been last spring, um, or two springs ago, we did a forum on like how to get bonding money for your parks and trails. And it um, and maybe I'll have it, we'll have it, I'll, I can send a link out to that too in our newsletter again as a reminder for people, but we'll probably do something similar again this spring if you sort of want to get more tips and tricks for thinking about like maybe getting bonding bills money for your parks and trails. But um, like I said, if you hadn't started that process last year, you're probably going to need to, um, uh, you know, wait for the next year unless you're able to make sort of an emergency case on whatever your project is. Um, just a couple other things I wanted to cover. Obviously, I told you, you know, those grant programs are open. Go get that money. It's a lot easier for us to make the case for more money if you're using our money. Um, um, also, again, like I said, if you are thinking about legacy grants or if you need to know more, or you're like, wait a minute, I think I have a park or trail in my county or my city that might qualify, but we're not designated. Please do talk to Renee or Joe. Um, 
Other things that you should be doing, if you have not done so already, make sure that you are either introducing or reintroducing yourself to your legislators and talking about your parks and trails. Um, and ideally, as sort of our bills come up, you can discuss it with them. Um, and if you want more in depth on that, we did a forum on how to lobby your legislators in December, and there's a link to that on our website. Um, we are having, um, we'll be having, uh, you know, upcoming legislative forums later this session. Again, like I said, once a month. So join us in those. Um, watch for action alerts. Um, and, you know, we will label them very clearly, action alert. So watch for them because, again, if things go haywire, we're going to need your help. And then finally, um, our legislative action day is coming up um, on February 1st. And this is going to be a hybrid one. We are, we have a room over at the Capitol where we're going to be doing this. And that part of the program is going to last just under two hours. I'm very excited. Um, we had a, originally invited just um, Assistant Commissioner um, uh, uh, Shannon Lothhammer. And uh, she's like, well, I'm going to be running around the Capitol with uh, Commissioner uh, Stroman. So both Sarah Stroman and Shannon Lothhammer are going to be there to meet everybody who's there, meet our board. Um, we are going to have the team who makes grants from the DNR. We'll be speaking after them, just talking about the grant programs, you know, everything you need to know, both to apply and sort of tips and tricks about like what makes a successful app application. So again, if you're going to go after that money, it's probably good to attend that. Um, Renee is going to talk about what they have going on at the commission. They've been doing some exciting, you know, in addition to all the grant making and designation, they've been doing some exciting work around mountain bikes that uh, as a mountain biker, I'm very excited about. Um, I will be talking about both our legislative agenda and, you know, where our bills are at and how to get out and lobby your legislators that day. And then we're going to have a couple surprise legislators stopping by. Um, still working on that. The floor session for that day is a little in flux. So um, a little questionable about who's going to be available, but um, we're always able to get somebody to stop by. And um, I'm also for those who are there in person. So we're going to cut the video off, obviously. Um, that's only going to be for two hours. And we'll make that available if you're not able to attend, especially for that, you know, Parks and Trails grants piece of it. Um, but we, obviously, we'd love to have you there in person, but you are welcome to attend via Zoom. For those in person, I will then, assuming, of course, that I'm no longer in a boot, will be giving a, a tour of the Capitol grounds as well, um, the inside, showing you kind of like, you know, where's the floor, how do you talk to your legislators, that kind of thing. So um, we sent out a registration link earlier this week. We will be sending it out again, you know, at least once or twice next week. So um, that's all I have on my agenda. And that's a lot of talking by me. Does anyone have any questions, suggestions for what we can talk about next time? Jokes? Ben? Hey, Elizabeth, if nobody has questions. Oh, Renee, do you got a question? No, I was just going to say that I think no one has questions because you covered it really thoroughly. So um, doing great work on behalf of Greater Minnesota, and we're very appreciative. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Yeah, thanks I everybody. Did not say that. Oh, thanks everybody for joining us. I just do want to throw a plug out there too. Some of you may have been contacted. Um, some of you may be contacted, um, and or if you know of somebody who resides in District Five, we have an opening on our our board. Um, so you can either send me an email or Elizabeth an email um, for that. Uh, we are looking for somebody for that because we had a resignation there. So. Yeah, that is what part of the state is District Five? That's, that's um, the southwest. So that's everywhere from like I think as far like west and south as like Laverne and Marshall, as far east as like Mankato and St. Peter. You know, and we'll take anybody, city staff, county staff, um, elected official, or whatever. But yeah, Ben is right, and I should have mentioned that we do need a new board member for that district. And Renee, do you guys need new board commission members, or are you all full up? No, um, actually, we've got vacancies in District 6, which is southeastern Minnesota, and we have a vacancy in District 5 as well. So those are two open seats where we had commissioners resign due to different circumstances. And as well, there are seats that are open for <clears throat> um, every four years, seats come, become vac um, open, but we did our commissioners in those districts have reapplied gratefully um so we're hoping to continue their good work but we do have those vacancies in five and six 
Excellent. Thanks. Anyone else have questions? Awesome. Well, again, uh, I really am thrilled that all of you showed up. Um, if you have any feedback, you know, if this was useful, let us know. If it was not useful, if you'd like us to cover something else, let us know. And um, obviously, you can always contact us in between on Parks and Trails issues. Um, um, you know, I, I think most of you have, again, my contact information, but I'm just going to put it into the chat in case you don't. Um, you can always um, email me uh, during session. It may sometimes, depending upon what's going on, take me a day or two to get back to you, but I will respond. Um, so, you know, if you have questions about what's going on, you know, even if you need advice on your own bill, I'm not going to lobby it for you, but can always answer a question or two, but I'm also happy to answer questions on what, you know, what may be going on. Sometimes, I'll be honest, that's how we hear about things. The other thing I would be is if you're hearing about something that you think we should be worried about, do let us know. So, well, uh, thanks again. This was great. And uh, we'll see you all hopefully on the first, but if not at our next forum next month. So thank you.